Hello again, and welcome to the Walking Dead video recaps, where I am recapping the episodes that were missed in Season 6.1, and we're getting down toward the end, because right now, I'm going to go over Episode 6.1.7, yes, the penultimate episode, called Heads Up, and there's a reason for that, and if you had to end an episode immediately after somebody says the title, this episode would last all of about two minutes and then it'd be done. Um, but what happens? What is the most important thing that happens in this episode? The most important thing in this episode is that Glenn is alive. <laughs> yes, Glenn's alive. He's alive. <laughs> yes, we find out that in the opening, in the teaser opening, uh, when Glenn went down, as many people expected, he pulled uh, Nicholas on top of him. So when we saw all the, the, the entrails and blood and everything going everywhere, that was Nicholas being eaten. So what does Glenn do? Well, being the kind of guy who thinks quickly on his feet, he crawled under the dumpster and stayed there. Uh, through the rest of the day and through the evening. And the zombies got bored and they wandered off. So as soon as they were gone, uh, he crawls out. It's the next morning. The problem is Glenn's dehydrated because he's been laying under a hot dumpster, which it can't be really good to begin with. And then you've got rotting bodies all around you, so it's got to be even worse. How this guy did not like throw up constantly for you know hours we won't know but Glenn's dehydrated he's not feeling well but guess what Glenn's not the only one who's not dead in that moment we hear hey heads up asshole and who is standing on a building overlooking the alley where Glenn is it's Enid it's Enid! Carl's little pudding. She's still alive. She tosses Glenn a bottle of water and then takes off. Well, Glenn is not one to look a gift Enid in the mouth, so he goes looking for her. And this sets up a large part of Glenn's story where he's trying to track down Enid and find out what's going on with her. Why is she not back at Alexandria? And of course, he has no idea what's happening. But, um,. Back in Alexandria, of course, uh, a lot of the action is revolving around Morgan, who is doing his bow staff exercises. And Rick comes up to him and wants to talk to him. And Morgan talks to both Rick and Michonne and Carol. And, you know, they bring up this whole, so are you going to kill philosophy or not? And Morgan's basically laying it out. No, I'm never going to kill anyone. All life is precious, even bad guys. I'm not going to kill them. Well, this doesn't go down real well with anyone at the table, particularly Carol, who's really boisterous about the fact that there are some motherfuckers need killing. And if you're not going to kill them, you know, that's going to cause a problem. Little do we know, unintended consequences that aren't dealt with right away usually come back to bite you in the ass and guess what there's a big one just waiting off screen getting ready to chomp so um, in the meantime Morgan's going over to see you know our our doctor <sighs> what is her name again I got the notes right here in front of me <laughs> god I hate this it's like well he goes over to see Denise I should know that he goes over to see Denise and he's like you know what do I do to help bring down an infection and she's like, well, let me check you out. And he's going, oh, it's not me, you know. So she gives her antibiotics. He, she gives him antibiotics. But this happens later in the episode. And unfortunately, guess who scopes out what's going on? Um, yeah, Carol. Just who you want. Sneaking around on you, the angel of death. Yeah, I think I'll just you know, put on my hood and get my sickle and come pay you a visit. But Rick is discussing the matter of what they're going to do about the walkers around Alexandria, you know, and he's telling Michonne, hey, you know, we'll get cars and stuff like that, and we'll drive them away, you know, as soon as everybody gets here and we get enough cars, we'll get this 
we'll get this thing going. But in the meantime, Rick has a request. There's a special request. Ron, Jesse's kid, you know, the one who's pissed at Rick and at Carl um, about everything that's going on, ask if he could have shooting lessons. Well, of course, Rick's like, yeah, sure, come on, I'll teach you how to shoot. Why Rick doesn't want to teach anybody else? Now, that doesn't mean nobody's being taught, but Ron's only when it comes to Rick and asks for shooting lessons. Uh, you know, there are other people being trained, one of whom is uh, Eugene, who is completely worthless. He, this guy uh, wouldn't protect his ass for a moment if, you know, it was on fire. But anyhow, Rick's giving Ron shooting lessons, and Carl's there. And Rick's describing what needs to be done. And Carl is just being the most obnoxious little douchebag in the world. And again, this is a case of Carl is completely oblivious to what the hell is going on. We as the viewers know, you know, Ron's looking to bag him some bitch. And Carl's got that big B <laughs> carved in his forehead. But he's not picking up on it. He's not picking up on the shade that Ron's throwing his ass. And Carl sometimes, he hasn't been like a douchey little prick for a while. But now all of a sudden it's like all that pent up douchiness that he's had inside him is just coming out. And it, he's just being a smarmy little asshole all the while. Which when you're doing this to a kid who's learning how to shoot a gun, who you know is kind of probably pissed off at you about their girlfriend, you know, just just give a stick and point Carl in the direction of the nearest hornet's nest because that's exactly what he's doing. And again, it's just like kind of ridiculous writing and acting because, Jesus, come on, Carl, you can't tell that Ron's pissed and all of a sudden it's like, I want to go to the guy who killed my dad to learn how to use a weapon. Okay, yeah, it goes over real well. Um, duh. Uh, so meanwhile, back outside of Alexandria, we've got two stories going on, inside and outside the walls. Um, Glenn hunts down Enid. He finds her and figures out that, you know, she's running basically to get away from any impossible entanglement. You know, Glenn's sort of like, you know, you just can't run away from your friends. You just can't go off and isolate yourself from everyone simply because you don't want to see people die. And that's essentially what Enid's doing. It, it's hurt her too much. She's seen all the people around her die. You know, and the kid's a teenager. You know, she's not much older than Carl. She's probably Carl's age. So she's not much older than Carl, and she's seen her parents die. She's probably seen friends die. I get the feeling that she's not too worried about Ron dying, but I'm starting to get the impression that, you know, Carl's dying, you know, Carl dying would hurt her. Why else would she go and see Carl as the last person there is before she cuts out of there? It's because she knows Carl understands her. Carl is the sort of dude who he's lived out in the wild. He understands what it's like. And she doesn't want to see this happen. She, I think she, at this point, you can kind of gather that she is growing attached to Carl. You know, the whole scene in the tree where she's like, you're afraid of me too. She's afraid of him, he's afraid of her. It's not fear of anything other than a burgeoning romance. I don't, she doesn't want to get attached to him. She's afraid to. And Glenn's reminding her in some great foreshadowing, you know, well, you just can't, you know, yeah, you're going to lose people around you, but you, you can't go running away because of that. You know, everyone's going to die. Gee, you think, Glenn? No, no, Glenn's alive. Yes, he's alive right now. Right now is the operative word. I mean, everybody in The Walking Dead is going to die. It's going to happen, let's face it. So uh, nobody gets out of this one alive. So they, you know, he's trying to impart this, this wisdom onto her. 
And they finally get back to Alexandria and they see it's surrounded by walkers. And Glenn's like, well, I'm going to get inside this place somehow. And Enid's like, you know, screw this shit. You're out of your mind. And he, he's like, my wife's in there. My friends are in there. I just can't ignore them. I can't abandon them. I'm getting in there. If you want to help me, you can. If not, F off. I don't give a shit. You know. So they kind of leave that there. And unfortunately, they have balloons. So the balloons are going to play an important part here. Uh, they have balloons. Uh, Enid filled up a bunch of balloons with helium. They had an extra tank sitting outside because, you know, they used balloons to mark the, the zombie fun run uh, zones. And uh, she says these would be great distractions, you know, and let one go, the zombies will watch them fly away. So they have balloons. Okay, this is going to play an important part. In this whole discussion uh, back inside Alexandria about getting people to lead the zombies away with uh, vehicles. Michonne brings up a point, well, we could use some of the Alexandrians. We don't have to wait for Sasha and Abraham and Daryl to come back, who it's the next day from when everybody went out and they haven't returned. So things are starting to get a little, you know, a little sketchy on that deal. Rick is back in crazy Rick modes, more or less. And he's just like, Screw these guys. I don't give a shit. We're keeping this among ourselves. He's really, it's, it's weird that Rick has this whole thing going on of, I don't want these people. They're all going to die. Fuck them. Yeah, I don't want anything to do with them. And you're kind of just wondering, at what point does Rick start walking around just capping dudes left and right because he's decided you're more trouble than what you're worth. Well, we're about to find out how soon that happens because Spencer decides that he's going to go over the wall and make a run for one of the vehicles and help drive the zombies away. He figures I can get to a car, I can start it up, and I can pull the zombies away. Well, of course, great idea, poor execution. Spencer's trying to shimmy his way across a cable over the wall to another building. And he's not having a whole hell of a lot of a lot of good coming out of this. In fact, he's, you know, you can tell something bad's going to happen. And what ends up happening is, boom, he goes down outside the wall, and all of a sudden people spring into action. Tara's up on the wall with Michonne. She leans way the hell out and starts just blasting into the zombie group, um, you know, Rick manages to help get Spencer back up. Spencer's climbing up, you know, the cable and stuff to get back over the wall. And in one of the funniest scenes in the whole thing, again, crazy Rick, I don't care about these Alexandrians. He gets them up there and he turns on Tara. And he's like, what the hell is wrong with you? You don't put yourself out for these people. I mean, seriously. He's just like screaming this out like, you don't risk your life for these people. And both Tara and Michonne are like looking at Rick like, what in the hell is wrong with this dude? And Tara's just like, <laughs> she just flips Rick off in one, of, you know, in, in one of the great scenes, she's just like flipping him off. Like, who the hell are you? But it really, you just wonder, it, when's either Rick going to start capping people or people on the ground are just going to go, the hell with this dude. <laughs> I don't care how bad we need him. You know, we're cannon fodder to these guys. We're zombie chow. He doesn't give a shit. And he really doesn't. I mean, it's just so obvious that at this point, Rick's just like, fuck you all. You know, I'm not putting myself out there to, you know, save you. And he has a discussion with Deanna later where she says, Spencer was just trying to help. And he's like, yeah, I get it. He was trying to help and it was a good idea. But Spencer basically doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He should have come to me first. <laughs> so there's all that going on. You know, it's coming to a head. You've got the, the people are all getting almost complacent to the fact that there's walkers all around and eventually somebody's going to come up with a plan 
that's going to deal with this. And you see little groups here and there kind of hanging out. And of course, one of the groups that you see is Carl walking down the street and Ron's coming up behind him from a distance. Of course, Ron is now packing a pistol, which when Rick gave it to him, it was unloaded. Ha ha ha. You know, Ron figured out, hey, everybody else is busting shit out of the pantry. I may as well go to the pantry too. And since the armory is right next door, he gets into the armory and he bags a couple of bullets. I guess he figures, you know, that's all I need is a couple of bullets. So he's sneaking up on Carl. You know, the idea here is going to be one round back of the head, boom, that's it. I'm going to take out this prick once and for all. And then there's balloons floating through the air. Balloons, pretty balloons. We remember from something that Glenn said, I will send you a signal to let you know that I'm alive. Michonne remembers this and she related it to everyone else. If Glenn's out there, he'll send us a signal. Guess what? Here's the signal and everyone sees it as a signal. Everyone's like, look, Glenn's out there. He's alive. Yes, he is. And there's also this ominous creaking sound coming from the other side of the wall, which is where the clock tower is. The clock tower next to where the semi ran into the wall and damaged it severely. The clock tower, which is not in the best of shape anyway, and took damage from said collision. The clock tower, which is now leaning <laughs> in towards the wall. More and more and more, and finally there's just this huge splintering crash and it comes down right on top of a section of the wall and it brings it down. Which if the wall had bracing on the inside, it might have actually stayed up. But for some reason, all the bracing is on the outside of the wall, which I don't get. I, I never have gotten this one, but that's, I didn't design the place, you know, don't worry about it. Anyway, the section of the wall comes down and we all know what this means, you know. Hey, guess what? Buffet's open, zombies. Come on in. It's all you can eat for a limited time only. And that's basically where it ends right there at that point where the shit hits the fan in a major, major way. The wall is down. Walkers are coming into Alexandria. This is more or less following what happened in the comic where a herd attacked, a herd came up to the walls of Alexandria and managed to push one of the one part of the wall down and came inside. So the stuff that follows in the next episode start to finish uh, pretty much covers the events that happened in one issue of the comic. And I will review that tomorrow because basically I want to watch uh, the next episode tonight, the new episode, where we'll see the aftermath of what happened after the episode start to finish. And uh, like I said, I will review start to finish, give you a quick recap of it, in case you'd forgotten. Um, I will also probably give you some thoughts on what I felt about the new episode, but not a lot because I know Rachel's going to review that and I don't want to spoil her. Besides her and I will have fun snarking the shit out of the new episode that will air tonight. And then I'll finish off with just one last thing, uh, sort of a wish list of something I would love to do, but I don't know if it'll ever happen. So anyway, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you've enjoyed all of my recaps up to this point, which I have been working diligently to get done. And enjoy tonight's premiere episode of season 6.2.1. Uh, let me see what the name of that episode is tonight because uh, I, I have it right here in front of me. Hold on. Let me, let me get this. Where are you episode? <laughs> Bastard is taking forever. Uh, it is no way out. Well, we know that's not true. There has to be a way out. Uh, tonight's episode, No Way Out, and the next week episode will be A Larger World, 
which is actually one of the graphic novel volumes names is a larger world and I know where that's going but I'll leave that for uh, Rachel to review and for me to help her snark upon so we'll see what happens take care and have a good evening and enjoy tonight's episode bye